Are you looking to get fit this New Year's? Are you looking to get that sexy beach body? You're already sexy. Or most importantly, do you want to get healthy and feel better every single day of your life? Well, you're in luck because today I have the story on how I lost 60 pounds in 16 weeks. Back in June 2007, I was 165 pounds. Oh, look at that baby face. It looks so cute. By December 2008, I was 225 pounds. The weight gain was deliberate. I wanted to gain weight so that I could compete in powerlifting, and I ended up setting a few state records. But at what cost? I would get ridiculed by my family on my appearance. I could never hear the end of it from my friends. And my girlfriend at the time bought me pants waist size 50 as a joke. By the end of 2008, I had had enough and I needed to do something about it. The way I still see it now, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, and any other healthcare providers are not going to know how to lose weight. I know I'm one of them. And in my medical training, we did not touch anything about weight loss at all. Doesn't make sense, does it? But the way I see it was that bodybuilders know the best about losing fat. And given that I was competing in powerlifting, the best solution for me was to find a knowledgeable bodybuilder and work with that person when it comes to my diet and exercise. So I decided upon somebody named Shelby Starnes. His website is in the description below. This is not a paid video, by the way. I really like Shelby, and this is my experience with Shelby. At the time, I was still training for powerlifting. I was lifting four times a week, meaning I had two lower body days and two upper body days. I'll explain more in a different video the way that I trained. And given the conditions of my body at the time, Shelby was able to assess my needs then and line out the base plan for what would work best for me. So we decided to do carb cycling for the diet. So we had three kinds of days going on based on my weight training for that particular day. First day, high carb day. This was my heaviest training day. Divided amongst seven meals, I would eat a total of 360 grams of carbohydrates, 215 grams of protein, no added fats, and I would do no cardio for that day. You might think that this is probably the best day of the diet. That is anything but the truth. Second day, medium carb day. This was also on my training days, but as you can see throughout six meals, I only had 130 grams of carbs total, 275 grams of protein, 16 grams of added fat, and I would do 30 minutes of steady state cardio before I even had breakfast. What I mean by steady state cardio, get your heart rate up to 60% for 30 minutes. And the third day, low carb day, I would not weight train this day. I would have among six meals, 60 grams of carbs, 275 grams of protein, and 82 grams of fat. And for cardio, what I would do is something called high intensity intervals. I would do five minutes warm up, 15 minutes intervals, 45 seconds at a moderate pace, 15 seconds sprint, then the next 45 seconds, another moderate pace, and then 15 seconds thereafter, another sprint. You do that for 15 minutes in a row, followed by a 10 minute cool down where your heart rate is still above 60%. So most importantly, you would like to know the foods that I could eat. For proteins, I could have chicken breast, lean steak, ground beef, greater than or equal to 93.7, ground turkey, fish, and protein powder. For fats, I could do fish oil, olive oil, peanut butter, macadamia nut oil, coconut oil. The list goes on, as long as it's not lard or butter or, you know, anything else that's not healthy. You use common judgment. For carbohydrates, I limited myself to potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, white or brown doesn't matter, and oatmeal. So the way that it worked with Shelby and me was that I started on January 12th, 2009. I would check in with him once every Sunday to assess what the plan was for the next week. So the base plan was I would have two high carb days, two medium carb days, and three low carb days. That corresponds directly with weight training four days a week. So lucky for you, I actually have a training log that I wrote throughout the duration of this diet. Week number one. I lost five pounds this week, but I also had a hypoglycemic episode. I didn't pass out, but I actually felt dizzy. I had to sit down when I was at the grocery store buying my food. I emailed Shelby about this, and he said that this should be normal, and it should fade away after a week or two, and it did. For the next week, continue the current plan. Week number two, I lose yet another five pounds. And here is where I realized that high carb day is actually the day that's not fun. 
you are chronically hungry throughout the day. Sometimes you might get a little dizzy from the carbohydrates and you are constantly thirsty. It's ridiculous. But what I found out during week two is that I actually really liked low carb day. That was the day where I felt the most full. In fact, it was actually more food than what I was used to throughout the day. And the peanut butter was so good. <laughs> so plan for week three, continue. Week number three, I lose yet another five pounds. And here is where I start to notice that the palms and soles of my feet would actually start to sweat while I was doing cardio. Plan for week four, continue. Week number four, I lost another four pounds this week. And honestly, I'm thrilled because I've lost 19 pounds in four weeks. And the plan for week five, continue on the same plan. Week number five, I actually only lose one pound this week. So you can tell that my body is actually starting to adapt to this base plan of mine. I had a failed Valentine's date this week. Emily told me she can't make it on Saturday for the dinner and she wanted to move it to Friday instead. I think she has a date on Saturday instead and wants to move me over to Friday. And because of this, I canceled on her. I don't care. I'm losing so much weight. I don't care about Emily. <laughs> so the plan for week number six was that we would move one of the high carb days down to medium carb day. So moving one high carb day down to medium carb day actually has profound effects. I'm decreasing my carbohydrate intake per week by 230 grams and I'm increasing my cardio by 30 minutes every single week. I ended up losing four pounds with that change for week number six. And here I wrote that I'm starting to become tired all the time. I'm going to the gym 10 times a week at this point. So plan for week number seven, continue what we have right now. But the result wasn't that great because for week seven, I actually lost zero pounds. And because of this, Shelby's assessment was that I would increase medium carb day cardio from 30 minutes in the morning to 40 minutes in the morning. The other change would be that the high intensity intervals that I was doing on low carb day would be increased from 15 to 18. So we're doing nine more minutes of intervals and another 30 minutes worth of steady state cardio on the medium carb days. So those changes had a profound effect on week number eight, where I lost six pounds. And at this point, Shelby's assessment was that my metabolism was starting to slow down. When that's the case, your body can actually stall out for losing some weight. So he decided the best course of action for me was to make my one high carb day in that week into a super high carb day. And what that meant was that I would eat 50% more carbs at each meal. Everything else we would continue for week number nine. And the result was that I lost yet another four pounds for week number nine. It's here where I start to notice that my pants are starting to get really big and that my t-shirts are starting to look like garbage bags on me. So because of this, we would continue that particular plan for yet another week onto week number 10. And I only lost one pound and I needed to travel over to Rutgers University in New Jersey. So because you can't really bring a chicken breast and steak with you onto the plane, the next the best thing I did was I packed all of my meals in the form of protein powder in advance. And I made great progress for week 11. So by the time we got to week 11, I lost another four pounds. I'm noticing that my body is really starting to change. The way that I feel, the, my quality of sleep, the amount of effort that's required to get my heart rate up for cardio, all of these things are changing. So Shelby's determination for week number 12 was that I have a cheat meal as the very last meal of my high carb day. By cheat meal, he meant I could eat whatever I want for however long I want, as long as it is part of that meal. And believe me, I had high, high hopes for this. The sheer optimism. Followed by the sheer despair. I had 10,000 calories planned. I had cookies, cake, donuts, Chinese food, lasagna, lava cake, Doritos. Oh, I had it all. And right after the Chinese restaurant, which was the first stop, I pooped out. And by poop, I mean literally pooped out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so following the cheat meal, the plan for week number 13 by Shelby was that I would continue this following week but without the cheat meal. By the time I got to week 13, this was my very last week with Shelby. And believe it or not, after eating whatever I wanted for just one meal, I actually lost seven pounds for week number 13. Don't you wish you could do that all the time? Eat whatever you want, lose seven pounds. So his 
final suggestion to me for week number 14 was to increase my high intensity intervals from 18 to 20 minutes and also increase my medium carb day cardio from 45 minutes to 60 minutes in the morning. And that led to week number 14. And it is here where the people that I saw every day are literally commenting on my appearance. Some of the more insensitive comments I was getting was that I looked like a cancer patient. People were asking me if I was terminally ill because this was simply not a sight that you saw. My jawline was skinny, my face had compressed, my shirts weren't fitting. I added 30 minutes of morning cardio before breakfast on low carb days. Meaning at this point in time, I'm going to the gym 13 times a week. And when we got there by week 15, I lose yet another four pounds. Uh, I can tell my body is, is changing every single day. So I decided to continue. And by week 16, this is the final product. So we can see here the comparison from week number one to week number 16. I have a few lessons that I learned that I've written down and that I've thought about over the last six, seven years. Lesson number one, incremental changes are key. If you noticed at the very base plan of the diet at week one, things were actually pretty easy. There was nothing that was completely unbearable for me to do. And I was actually able to milk five weeks worth of progress out of it, almost 20 pounds just off of the base plan. And then one change happened, and yet I lost another five pounds after that. So the lesson here is to start easy, make one incremental change as needed, and you'll see that those changes add up in the long run, and you'll make more progress than if you start at the maximum level. Lesson number two, tracking your progress at the same time every week is key. The way that I did it was I would weigh myself every Monday morning and I would take pictures every Sunday evening. I would check in with Shelby on Monday night and he would tell me what I would do for the next week. You need to do both. You need to take pictures and you need to be on the scale. The problem with the scale is, is that your weight will actually fluctuate from day to day. So some days you might actually be a little heavier. Some days you might be a lot lighter. A lot of this is a fluctuation and what you're looking for is the long-term numbers, not necessarily what happens day to day. And the pictures are actually what's going to help you remember what's going on from week to week and how you're progressing. If you're not progressing anymore, then maybe you need to reassess your program. Remember, incremental change and go from there. Lesson number three, weight loss is actually easy compared to weight gain. I know people are going to think I'm nuts for saying this, but think about this. I lost 60 pounds in 16 weeks. I can't tell you if I've gained 60 pounds of muscle in the last 10 years that I started going to the gym. I'm pretty sure I haven't. That being said, in this context, fat loss is a lot easier than muscle gain. And the final lesson that I learned was that you don't need fancy supplements to make great progress in the gym. So with that being said, I have a list of frequently asked questions that some people might want to know about the diet. Question number one, what supplements did you use? So as I just stated, you really don't need anything special. One thing that I used that was recommended by Shelby was green tea extract. It's a thermogenic, so it increases your body temperature. And when you do that, you might be increasing your basal caloric rate, meaning that you are burning more calories as you are walking around. This doesn't work if you're not doing diet and exercise, by the way, so it's really only something to add to it. The other two supplements that I was using, protein powder was actually used in place of my meals. It was used to fulfill some of the meals as I went along. As of today, right now, I use protein powder as a convenience in that I can't spend three hours a day eating anymore. And the final supplement that I used is actually creatine. And creatine has been proven for decades at this point. It helped me get my bench from 185 to 225 pounds. I'm gonna make another video on how to increase your bench from 225 to 315. Creatine or not, you can still make progress in the gym. I'm not sold on any pre-workouts, peri-workouts, or post-workouts. Your post-workout should be a nice solid meal full of proteins and carbs. Anything else to me is a gimmick. Some people think they can spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on supplements and all of a sudden become jacked. I I'm sorry, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Next question. How do you ensure that you are getting the exact amounts of foods? For example, 50 grams of protein. So funny thing, I actually weighed all my food with a scale. This wasn't the particular scale that I used, but I actually still weigh my food. All you need to do is you need to put the bowl on top here. You need to tear it after the bowl is on there and then put, uh, you know, whatever food that you want on here. So you'll need to look at the nutrition facts of whatever food that you're eating 
and then you're going to need to see the serving size and the weight of the serving size and then how many grams of protein, carbs, or fats that are in it. Then you need to do a proportion calculation to find out how much of the serving weight that you need in order to fulfill that particular macro. So as far as I can remember for chicken breast, it ended up becoming about 253 grams to fulfill my 45 grams of protein. I'll leave a link in the description below on this particular scale. It's to Amazon and yes, it is a sponsored link. Click it if you'd like. Next question, do I have to limit my salt intake or diet soda intake? No, you don't really need to limit your salt intake. I didn't have to. Please note, I was also around 20, 21 years old at this time. I had no health problems. Next question, I'm a girl but don't want to be too muscular. What should I do instead? There are men who literally spend decades of their lives trying to build muscle. And for some odd reason, some people think that the moment that they touch a weight, they're all automatically going to put on muscle. I hate to break it to you, but it is really not that easy to build muscle. You're not going to become jacked after going to the gym for a month. I don't know where this misconception came from, but I'm going to tell you this. The more muscle that you have on your body, regardless if you're a man or a woman, you're going to have a higher basal caloric rate, meaning that you'll be able to handle more food throughout the day and not gain as much. And also nature has proven to us that it's much harder for women to put on muscle, mainly because of the hormones that are flowing around in your body as compared to men. So are you going to get jacked when you touch a weight? I'm sorry. But what should you do for weight loss? I'm speaking to my experience. If you chat with Shelby, he should be able to put you in the right direction on what you can do for your weight loss. I know that he treats his clients on an individual basis. We're all humans after all. Next question. Did you gain the weight back after you stopped dieting? The answer is yes. But what I mean by that is I gained some of the weight back. I didn't gain the fat back. But what happens after you diet for this long, your body is actually put into a depleted state. So once you start eating like you were before the diet, not as unhealthy, obviously, you're going to start to store a lot of the carbohydrates and water that you had lost in the initial weeks. So that 20 pounds I lost in the first four weeks, that actually came back. I look like this two or three weeks after my diet. And pretty much it's your muscles and your liver are able to store something called glycogen. Glycogen is actually chains of glucose, which is the scientific word for sugar. And because that you're now storing this, it actually draws water into those organs as well, and thus you have gained weight. But it's not really fat. Next question, how was your strength affected by dieting? Actually, by the time I got to week 10, I could actually feel that my weights were decreasing very sharply. At the time, I, I could bench about 315 pounds. I was lucky if I could hit 275 at week 10. I was also somebody who squatted close to 500 pounds consistently before the diet. By the time I got to week 14, 15, I could barely squat 135 pounds. You might think that this is an adverse event on your weightlifting routines, but it's actually pretty temporary. By the time I rebounded out of my diet back to about 185, 190 pounds, I was almost as strong as I was before the diet, but much lighter. So I guess you could say I was still stronger. Next question, I have to travel for work, what should I do? So the example I gave when I went to Rutgers and using the protein powder was the reason why I wanted to answer this question. Yes, now that I know that you are working and you have to travel, it makes it really difficult to do it. The thing is, is that you can bring things like protein powder with you and whatever foods that you can buy at whatever local grocery stores. I'm assuming that there's grocery stores where you're going. You'll need to be able to keep track of your food and all of those things as well. Wherever you travel, will probably have some kind of gym in some capacity. You're gonna have to bring your food and it's really all on you on how you want to handle your travel. Lo and behold, you can definitely do it. Next question, how much was your grocery bill when you were doing this? So at the time I lived in downtown Chicago and this is in 2009 dollars, but I would go to Costco to buy all my things and it would cost me about close to hundred dollars a week. Keep in mind, I wasn't eating out at any restaurants. I was cooking all my food. And a lot of times they would go under the $100 a week. And last question. I have to be at work early in the morning. I can't do fasted cardio before breakfast. What should I do? When I talked to Shelby, I actually asked him about this. And the next best thing that you can do is actually do cardio after your workout for that day. Because on medium carb day, it is assumed that you're going to be weightlifting. So instead of doing that 30 minutes before breakfast in the morning, you would do it after your workout. I personally have tried this out. It actually doesn't work for me. I do need to do the fasted cardio. That is the situation that is ideal, but sometimes you have to work with what you got. 
Oh, the final thing I wanted to say, this is a disclaimer, I hold no responsibility for what you do with your body. After watching this video, it is my recommendation that you hire a professional. And that's the story of how I lost 60 pounds in 16 weeks. Leave a like if you learned something new about weight loss. Leave me a comment if you got a question or if you want to tell me something about this video. Share this video if it motivated you to get in shape. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos today. I'm going to try to do these every Saturday. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you in the next one.